process with Elaine and today I'm going to demonstrate how to make this beautiful tea light holder and I've also converted it into a hummingbird feeder and I've had so much fun feeding hummingbirds with these beautiful um, mandala rocks and I hand cast all my own rocks so each one is very special and I paint them with black paint and then add color so let's get started So first of all, get my paints close to my project. It's so much easier if you have them just right by your rock and you don't have to reach very far to get your thoughts every time. So, and the paint that I'm using is the Americana um, Periwinkle and Sunny Day. And then I just added white um, to make the lighter colors on that for each of those colors. And that Americana dot uh, deco art paint is really good for dot painting. The consistency is good. Um, they have tons of colors and yes, yeah, so it's great. So first of all, what I did is I used a chalk pencil um, and a white chalk pencil and I used this Happy Dotting Company stencil that comes with my rock mold for the regular round rock and I just I just drew a little white line around the rim because sometimes it's just hard to see that edge there when you're painting especially if your light is not wonderful and um, then I just put this on here and pressed it down in the center and then I just used that little white line to line it up good and then I just drew lines out here just to keep um, keep centered and kind of on track. So first of all, I'm going to use my blue dotting tool and I'm gonna use the bigger end and I'm going to do one dot on each of these lines and then two in between each one of those and everybody's touch is different everybody's dots come out different sizes um, so you'll learn what um, works for you and i i tell my students just to practice first on the paper um, with different color, like a different color, so you can see it, of course, on the white paper. And um, just get consistent dots before you start painting on your project. And once in a while, you need to clean your brush off, or not brush, but dotting tool. Then I'm going to do my lighter yellow paint and just put another row just like that between each of those dots just above it so that it kind of nestles in down in that valley between the two dots below it. Now I'm going to do my, dark, I think I'm going to do my light blue and I'm going to do um, my purple stick and I'm going to go every other dot. So this will make these actually quite close to each other. Now 
I'm going to take my glue stick and do one just every other, between every other one of these. Now, take my white paint, take the bigger end of the blue tool, and just put one single dot at the very top of each of these big dots. And this little turntable is wonderful. And that you can get them. I got mine off Amazon. And they're inexpensive, but they're just so handy to have. I think they're called, if you look up Lazy Susan, I'll try to put the link in my description down below. And then you just take your small end of your blue tool and you want to do gradated dots. So you just want to dip once and then you want to start close to your dot that you made at the top and then just work your way around the side and then just dip at the very, dip your tool in the paint just at the beginning of your, when you dot. And once again, it's good to practice on your paper before you do this. I go into more detail in, in the, a little bit more detail um, on my first video tutorial of just the regular mandala rock. I just feel like that's a good rock to start with. Um, you can start with something like this, but it's it's easier if you start on a flatter surface. So I recommend that people start with just the regular round rock. But if you're like me, you just dive in and do whatever. <laughs> then we'll go around the other side. I just love these delicate little dots. They're just beautiful. Okay, I'm going to do another row just like that. And you can use other colors for these dots around here. Sometimes, like I use the dark yellow for the big dot. So I could have started with like a light yellow one row and then gone to darker yellow and then gone to white. I kind of like to end with white. Whether you do like a light yellow and a white row or if you do three rows. But it's kind of, it gets more challenging as you go down the side, of course. You can pick it up, but then it's just not as, it's harder, because you're harder to get your hand, both hands to be steady. Light purple. And just do five dots. And it's better to actually pick it up when you do this because. It's so hard to get it straight. Like this one, I got crooked. I 
And if you can't get it steady holding it this way, um, you could just keep it down, but, but look, look at it straight on, bend down or something so that you get, so that you can look at it straight. Okay. So now I'm going to do top dotting, and you can use a hair dryer. You can just wait for it to dry. I have a little fan as well that I. This, um, this works really good too. Hair dryer is faster. You want to close your paints, <laughs> which I didn't do before you do that so that you don't dry them all out. And it's good to keep your paints closed as much as possible when you're not using them. Otherwise, they'll dry out. And then they start, if you use them, then they make your dots all funky. I think I have these little um, tools that I got. They're actually for car detail touch-up. Um, they work really good for just taking something off and just dabbing it with a little black paint to fix it. So then to top dot, I like to use just the lighter color or darker color, whichever one you didn't use, and then the smaller tool. So I use the purple tool, so I'm gonna use the green tool, the large end, and I'm gonna use the darker paint since I used the light one on the first one. And just kind of gently you don't want to be too hard. You just want to use a gentle touch, soft touch for these dots. And if you want them more paint on, you can just dab it twice and do that. Okay, that just really makes it pop when you start doing your top dotting. And then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna just go out here on the end of each of these ones that I did here and just put one more dot out there. So I'm gonna do with my big end, larger end of the blue tool, just gonna put one more dot out on the end and if you need to pick it up to get it straight on that's fine I think I'm all right doing it this way with just one dot actually I think I am going to pick it up because I think it's just easier there we go Now I'll use my purple tool and do top dots on these large yellow dots. And once again, you just wanna use a soft touch. In my case, like the paint is not completely dry under there. And if you do it too hard, then you kinda of rupture that little bubble that was made when you put your dot down. You want to get it on there good enough so that it's nice and round. So this white paint, because I mixed it with the this yellow, light yellow paint, I mixed it with the white, which makes it, um, the white paint for some reason is runnier than the other ones I've noticed. So it kind of 
runs down the edge, so you, it is a good idea to kind of pick these up and then let them dry a little bit. You can kind of, I don't like to mess them too much because then I usually just end up making a bigger mess than if I'd have left it alone, but I'm just gonna kind of make that head uphill a bit. These ones are already too um, dry to do, to mess with them at all. It, it, it just dries so fast, so just. So on these edge ones, sometimes it's better, even with the bigger ones, just to pick it up and then just let it dry just enough so that they don't run downhill. My bigger dots did a little bit, but like I said, this white paint is more, it's runnier. You don't have to worry about that with the small dots, of course, because there's um, not as much paint. Just when you start getting these bigger ones, that you have problems with them wanting to run down. See, like those, I kind of ran downhill. That one did too. Okay. But in the end, it's, it's not gonna be a big deal. They're gonna look fine. And we're gonna top dot once more also. So, and sometimes I like to go back and top dot those little ones too. Since I use that bigger end, then I can, if I'm careful, I can just, just do a little tiny top dot here with white. It must, might have been good if I had used just that darker yellow instead of the lighter yellow, and then it would have been more contrast with the white, but this will be good. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go back and do a top dot with the, just the lighter color again. And just a soft touch on these. Just kind of set it down on there. Set that color on that last one. If you do use your hair dryer to dry it, don't just blast it with the hottest setting. Um, just use gentle low setting for that. And then I'm gonna use my large end of the green tool and just put a little white dot out here. So there you have it. That is the tutorial for the small tea light. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you get more of my tutorials. Well, hello again, my friend.